Hi there and welcome, Bryce Foster here, and today I wanted to talk about SDR console and FMDXing, two of my favorite topics and by far my favorite software to maximize the potential of SDRs for FMDXing. So we're gonna do a series, I think it's gonna be about five videos, 10 or 15 minutes each, that should walk you through everything from the basics of downloading SDR console and getting it dialed in just to listen to FM, which is gonna be what we're talking about today, um, all the way through some advanced best practices and tips and tricks to maximize every bit of the capabilities of the software that I'm aware of to get the most out of SDR console. So we're gonna go ahead and launch in to episode one with basics and that starts with simply downloading the software. So I'm moving over to my browser here where I've navigated to sdrradio.com. This is the website for SDR console and I'll take this opportunity to plug SDR console and talk a little bit about the unique nature of it, which is that it's hardware agnostic. So a lot of you are familiar with the SDR hardware environment, or perhaps you are. Um, There's some popular hardware manufacturers and a lot of them have accompanying software that is either limited or primarily focused on supporting their hardware. So an example of this is the AirSpy receivers, which have the AirSpy software platform, otherwise known as SDR Sharp, that is really optimized for the AirSpy um, physical hardware. There's also ELAD, which has accompanying software, and SDR Play, which has SDR Uno. All of these are great hardware and software platforms. SDR Console is unique in that, again, it's agnostic, so it supports all of these radios and more. So you should be able to use it with most mainstream SDRs and radios that support SDR functionality. And I am assuming today that you're familiar with SDRs in general, with the FMDXing hobby, and just some basics on how to use PCs and download things and install things. If you're not, there's ample content on all of these topics, so I'm not going to review those in depth. So first, we're here at sdrradio.com, sdr-radio.com, and we're gonna go to the download section, hover our mouse over, you'll see a couple options here. The one you actually wanna click if you just wanna download the current version of SDR console is right here on top of the download icon. We're gonna left click on that, come into this window and scroll to the middle of the screen. You can see there's an area to donate to the developer here. Um, which I would recommend, I have done before, and the developer, Simon of the UK, is fantastic. So um, here in the middle of the screen, in this first little gray section, um, don't, don't click on these download links right here. The purple download box is going to be what you want. These are the latest two versions of SDR console as of when I'm recording this video, which is May of 2023. So 3.2 is what I use. It's a stable release that's been out for a little while now. 64-bit is most likely your modern operating system. You can pick one of these links, get it download, walk through the inst installation process, and you'll get a fresh instance of SDR console. For those who are watching this and maybe are already familiar with the software, I also wanted to note that there are beta options, so you can download the latest cutting-edge beta releases down here further in the screen. Scroll down for the download sections here and play with those beta options. But again, I'm using version 3.2, which I would recommend for most average users. And we're gonna go ahead and move over to that. This is what you would see after you downloaded and installed a fresh instance of SDR console. You're gonna be greeted with this window that urges you to set up a radio definition. This is just the hardware connection so that SDR console can see and recognize and play your SDR hardware. So we're gonna hit the definitions button right here. Hit the search in the top left, and we're gonna be presented with a lot of these radio options. I mentioned some of the popular pieces of hardware. I don't think I mentioned the RTL dongle, which is also um, a popular entry-level platform. SDR console supports this as well, along with a lot of more obscure choices here. Today, I'm using an SDR Play, and I've already installed SDR Uno, which is the accompanying hardware software to the SDR Play hardware. Sometimes you'll need that or an API kit or some other basic piece of driver kind of software for your individual radio. Um, there's more guidance on some of that online. I'd recommend reading those resources and figuring out um, what you need, or you can just go in here and try it the first time and see if this recognizes your radio. If it doesn't, it's not because your radio isn't working, it's probably just because you need to install some basic 
firmware or software for your radio in order to get it um, up and running with your computer so that SDR console will recognize it. So with that said, I'm gonna click on V3 here under SDR play for my particular kind of radio, get a box that indicates it's found it, I hit add, and then I'm gonna have the ability to save this definition of my RSP Duo, which is the hardware SDR that I have set up here. So I'm gonna click into this. I get the option here of what bandwidth I wanna select. So SDRs of course have a bandwidth, the width of, of spectrum that they can receive all at once. And I'm gonna pick two megahertz, which is kind of a good native selection for the particular SDR that I'm using. I'm gonna hit start and it's going to launch into some audio and the display here, which defaults to seven megahertz, which is the 40 meter ham radio band. This is not what we want. We're focused on FMDX today. So we're going to first navigate over to the FM broadcast band, which leads me to the topic of how to change frequencies, which is the first thing we're going to do. So there's like five ways to change frequencies. So I'm gonna walk through a couple of them right now and we'll show you a few more later. Uh, the first one, which I do a lot, is just to simply hover your mouse over the frequency display here in the top left under the receive pane and scroll your mouse wheel. That will adjust the numbers up and down. You can also click on the top or click on the bottom of the number and that will also change these numbers. So we're gonna go over to this one and go ahead and click into the FM broadcast band. So here we're centered on 89.1. And again, I can change these in smaller increments if I want. And we're just gonna center ourselves on 90.1 right now, which is a local radio station here. And let's unmute the audio by clicking this box and see what we hear. All right, that's not what we want. That's some distorted static. And that's because this is selected to lower sideband, which is a uh, prop or um, a transmission mode that is uh, used at seven megahertz, but not used for the FM broadcast band. So we're gonna select BC-FM right here, and you'll see a few things happen. Number one is that this green space right here, which is the width of the signal being actively tuned in by the receiver, that has gotten much wider to reflect the width of an FM broadcast signal. It defaults to 250 kilohertz, so I'm gonna drop down the section here on the left called filter, which is underneath a mode, which we also drop down. And this is gonna reinforce that 250 kilohertz selection and give me some other options to change the filter um, to different widths. We'll talk more about filters in episode two. So I'm not gonna go into depth of that right now. We're just gonna stick with 250, which is a good selection. And we're gonna unmute our audio and see if it sounds better now. And Frank knows the risks of doing stand-up in China. He got his comedy. So that works. This is one of my local radio stations. Sounds good, nice and clear. And this is what we would expect from an FM receiver. So mission accomplished on just listening to a basic FM station. So um, up to the topic of the navigation method in SDR console. For those familiar with Excel, Word, or other Microsoft Office products, I think you'll probably be familiar with the ribbon concept of navigation, which is generally how SDR console works. We have this ribbon here at the top and then different um, specific subsets here that we can display. Really, I spend most of my time in home view, receive, and record slash playback. The other four I rarely use, except for on just occasions where I need to change settings or, or, or dial something in, just me personally. Um, but I think you'll probably use these first four the most often. Today, we're gonna really just focus on home, which is the basic settings. So first we have a start and stop, so you can stop the entire SDR um, receiver by hitting the stop button that will open back up the start button just to start it again, or we can select radio, which this goes back to the definitions we set up. If you had more radios set up, you could switch to a different SDR hardware. You could change bandwidth here and you can just hit start or you could hit that start button, which was um, illuminated there. And that is how to start and stop your SDR. Um, bandwidth here, we already talked about adjusting bandwidth. You can do it from this window as well. I would ignore calibration frequency. Like I said, there's a bunch of different ways to adjust frequency. If you click on this one, you can type in the frequency that you want. So we could type in 107.5 and go all the way to the top of the FM band, 
hit OK, and that would dial me into 107.5, which is all the way on the other side of the FM band. And I'm going to change frequencies another way, which is to scroll the mouse wheel as I'm just hovering over anywhere in the spectrum here. And you'll see it scrolls it in predefined increments. I'll talk later about how to set those increments up to 100 or 200 kilohertz, which might be more useful for FMDX. But the basic uh, default setting is 50 kilohertz. So it'd go from 107.5 to 107.55 in this example. Not particularly useful for FMDX, but again, we'll optimize that later. Um, and those are pretty much the main ways to set frequencies. There's a few more you can point and click. Um, within the spectrum that you have pulled up, which I'm kind of doing right now, you could, as you see um, signals coming in. And then we're gonna use that first method of just hovering over and hitting the mouse wheel to navigate ourselves back to 90.1. And then you'll see 90.1 in this case, we wanna center over 90.1. It's all the way on the left side. So how do we center within our bandwidth that we're listening to? Well. We'll go up to the top right, and here we'll see these five buttons. So we have scale, low, high, this button, and zoom. The thing I call this button is what we click in order to center. So you can go anywhere, hit that button, and it will center the bandwidth of your SDR over that period. I'd also note that the zoom feature is very handy. It defaults to zooming in a little bit. I always like to have it, almost always like to have it zoomed all the way out. I'm gonna do that here so I can see the entire bandwidth that we selected that my SDR is receiving right now, which is approximately two megahertz, which is what we're seeing right now live. Um, there's also these buttons, which we'll cover uh, low and high in the next episode and some other just more advanced topics in that episode. But for now, the low stakes we have a working FM receiver. Um. Difference. And you can play around with this in DX to your heart's content. Now you'll notice, you know, I talked about some advanced topics that we'll talk about next time. I'm sure you'll see other, if you're a seasoned FMDXer, um, some other settings that could be optimized. The RDS, for example, here is not showing a PI code, which SDR console is very capable of doing. Um, the contrast allowing us to see weak signals here is not optimized. It's at its default setting. Um, you know, there's a number of, of settings here that are not um, optimized for FMDXing, which is the whole point of the rest of this series. So I'd recommend that you stay tuned if you're interested in learning more about advanced ways to make SDR console work better for your FMDXing. And with that, I will bid you adieu and see you next time. Thanks.